Hey guys, I've got one of my Kenston polymer tub dishwashers here today. I'm going to be showing you how to take this thing apart. Before we get started, make certain that you have all your proper PPE, gloves, glasses, any other necessary equipment. You always want to make certain that the unit is disconnected from power and water prior to beginning service. All right, to get started, let's go ahead and pull out our racks. Now, I do want to remind you, this unit is not installed inside a cabinetry. It's not secured. Anytime I open my door, I want to keep my hand on top of the cabinet to ensure that it does not flip over onto me. The bottom rack, we're just going to roll and pull completely out. All right, to remove the upper basket is one whole assembly. It's got these locking clips here on the front. What we're gonna do is we're gonna release the catch on this clip, pull it straight up, and then just pull the clip off of our rail. All right, we're gonna do the same with the left hand one. And once we have it removed, that's gonna allow us to pull our entire basket up and off. All right, to remove the rail completely, there's the similar clip back here on the back. We've got a release, pull straight up, just like we did with the front ones. And that's gonna allow us to pull the rails completely out from between our rollers. If you ever come across the situation where this upper rack is actually falling out, between these rollers, if that rail's sliding out, look at your two rollers and see that they are vertically aligned. They should be, the top one should be directly over the bottom one. If not, then you can make adjustments to try to bring them into square. But to take off these rollers, it's actually a T25 Torx. And the screw actually mounts directly into the cabinet itself. And that comes as a complete assembly. If you look around the perimeter of my door, I've got 10 screws going all the way around the perimeter. Four, two here and two on that side down here towards the bottom are actually Phillips head screws. These are holding my front door skin on. I'm going to go ahead and remove all four of these first before I deal with the six torques across the top. All right, so I'm going to hold my skin as I close my door, and then I'm just gonna allow the, the door to slide down on its own and I'm gonna take it off. Use caution anytime you're handling this door skin. It has been known to cut and scratch. So this gives us access to our dispenser assembly and I wanted to point out our tech sheet. All right, to remove the console, we're gonna be taking out these six T20 screws. Make certain that you're supporting the front panel as you remove the last torque screw. That way it doesn't just fall off and pull on our wire harness. And then we can lift our door up and gently bring our console down. As you can see, my console has a cover. It has three screws, three Phillips head screws that are holding my cover on to protect it. Let's go ahead and remove these three screws so we can pull our console out or pull our control board out. Let's go ahead and remove these three screws so that we can pull our control board cover off. We're going to disconnect our touch pad. We're going to disconnect our wire harness and then this should be this black and red should be our incoming power supply so if we wanted to remove the control board itself we've got four Phillips head screws going around the perimeter of it and they're just securing it directly to the, the front console here. There is a rubber gasket 
that actually goes around the perimeter of this thing. So whenever that cover is in place, it's actually sealing. We're trying to prevent any moisture from being able to gain access into this area of the unit. There's our main control board. Here's the gasket I was talking about. It actually lays up inside of this little, there's a little track here to make certain that you get it in the right spot. And for our user interface, we have three different Phillips head screws. got a clip holding it on each side. We're going to release it and pop it off. And that's our touchpad right there. All right, so here's our door latch assembly. We've got two black wires on one connector, two white wires on the other connector to actually remove the assembly, it's a T20 Torx. We can set our door latch off to the side. So let's go ahead and remove my dispenser assembly. First thing I want to do is disconnect my wire harness. And then we're going to remove the six Phillips head screws that are going around the perimeter of it. Make certain that you are supporting the dispenser assembly whenever you remove this last screw. I don't, we don't need it to go falling into the unit and scratch our finish. We can take our dispenser assembly out and set it off to the side. All right, so let's go ahead and disconnect my wire harness in this ground. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the, start the process for removing the door. All right, let's go ahead and cut the zip tie down here at the base. Anytime you cut a zip tie, make certain that you have one to replace it with. I'm going to go here to my door springs, and we're going to actually lift and disconnect our door spring. And we can set these off to the side. Now, if you look, there is a Torx screw right here on the front holding my two hinges together. Let's go ahead and remove that so we can take the door assembly off. So we're going to grab, grab our lock and we're going to rotate it to the left. It's going to allow us to release it and pull the lower spray arm out. Now these are three separate parts. If you need to replace one independently, these are three separate parts. But if you're removing them, you can take them out as a complete assembly. Just to make life easy for yourself. Then we're going to grab our filter screen. We're going to lift it up and off, set it off to the side. All right, next I'm going to show you our gasket. Now this is a press and fit gasket. Basically it's, it's got ribbing on the side, so you just press it into this little channel that goes all the way around. But I'm going to go ahead and remove our gasket. So this one does come with an insulating blanket. I'm going to go ahead and just move our insulating blanket. Give us a little bit more visibility here. We've got our strike that has two screws. I'm going to go ahead and remove those two screws. Now these strikes can be tweaked. 
using a pair of channel locks or a, a pair of pliers if you have some type of an alignment issue with the door latch assembly versus going and replacing it. Just keep that in mind. So there's my strike. I'm set that off to the side. All right, so this is my fill hose. It's coming directly from my valve. The actual port is part of the tub assembly. So if this is damaged for some reason, the tub would need to be replaced. But I'm going to go ahead and remove my hose. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and remove my water valve. That actually has two T20 screws going right through the metal frame on the front. Let's go ahead and disconnect the pink and white wire that are holding on to it so we can set our water valve off to the side. So this right here is our overflow switch. I've got it turned upside down so you guys can see this screw down here in the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and unscrew it. That'll let me pull my overflow switch off. Set that off to the side and then if we come back to the inside of our tub, we're just going to pop that out of there. So there's a nozzle here at the top of our unit. I want to go ahead and disconnect because I'm going to be going down to the bottom of the unit. It just unscrews. That's going to release the top of our tube. Make sure you do not lose the gasket that goes onto the tube. If you follow it around to the back side, you'll see that it's got a torque screw back here on the back, securing it for the middle spray arm. Go ahead and remove that. And that's going to release our entire tube. And again, do not lose, there is a washer. Don't lose this rubber washer as well. If you come right here to this fitting, this is actually the, the end of our tube. So we're going to undo this 5 16 clamp so that we can release this tube and we can set this off to the side. While we're here let's go ahead and release our 5 16 hose clamp off the drain line so we can remove the entire drain line off the unit. There's our drain hose. All right, let's go ahead and disconnect our heater. Now this red and white wire here, these actually go to the heater and they have these special little sleeves, these rubber sleeves. Make certain you don't leave these little rubber sleeves, don't lose them. And then we're gonna take a half inch socket and undo both of the, the nuts that are tightening our heater. Now one thing I want to caution you about, whenever you're tightening these little nuts back up, be very, very careful not to over tighten them. If you tighten this thing too much, you're going to cause it to split and it's going to create a leak. These are, these are very, very thin pieces of metal. So now that we've released our heater, we can come back into our tub. We're going to actually pull it out of each of these clips. There's our heater. All right, so let's go ahead and disconnect our wire harness, get our harness out of our way. We have two wires connected to my thermistor. Two yellow wires. We've got a zip tie holder up here in the top we've disconnected. Looks like we've got one T20 Torx holding a ground. Remove that. We've got the connection going to our wash pump here. We've got the connection for our drain pump down here, a purple and a white wire. And we have our high limit thermostat right here monitoring our water temperature doesn't get too hot. So that's going to let us take our entire wire harness and set this off to the side. So what I have left is basically my wash pump, 
drain pump and my sump assembly and my two thermostats. Let's go ahead and take my wash pump off. It's got two screws going in the, this metal bracket right here. So we're going to remove both of these screws. Pull my bracket off. Then we're just going to wiggle our pump to get it out of here. That's our wash motor. We can go ahead and set this off to the side. So I'm going to go ahead and pull my sump assembly. What you're, do, what you're going to do is you're going to turn these. These are little locks to release the, the tension on my sump. There's four of them total. That's going to let us bring our sump assembly out. So let's take a quick look at our sump. We do have our gasket for our sump. Very important, make certain this doesn't get damaged, set it someplace off to the side. Let's go ahead and pull our sump assembly apart. I'm going to remove the three T20 screws that are inside of here. It's going to let us pull this filtering device off, or this filter screen off. There's our check ball right there. Make sure you get this back in the proper location. This actually sits. There is a little ramp right here that sits on that, just like that. But there's our check ball. Set all that off to the side. That's everything on the front side. Let's flip it around to the back side. We have our thermostat or thermistor right here for our temperature. It's got one Phillips screw holding it in. There's our, and it does have paste on it. If you do have to remove it and replace it, try to retain as much of that paste as you can. That's a thermal paste to help with its ability to sense through the plastic. Last thing left is our drain pump assembly. Now it does, I wanted to point out this little rubber backflow preventer. That's to keep trash from migrating back into the dishwasher. For the pump, it's got three T20 torque screws. There's our drain pump right there. Set it off to the side. And that's what a replacement sump is going to look like. All right, guys, we've completed a teardown of a Kenston polymer tub dishwasher.